Okay, so we're going to discuss today about the malarial infection. So, malarial infection here is a primarily caused here by your plasmodium species. Okay, so we have here the other name for your malarial infection. So, this is also called here as Aromance disease, Chagas disease, March fever, but also here your coastal fever. Okay, for the history of malaria, so it started here as early as 2700 BC in China and India, which has been already identified this infection. It was then Hippocrates to try to give a, the first clinical manifestation or clinical description about this uh, parasitic infection. It was then discovered here by Ross and Laveran. Okay, basically the malarial infection is uh, transmitted here by the bite of your female Anopheles mosquito. Okay, for the, the vector here is basically the female Anopheles mosquito because that one try to feed on the blood of the patient. And because this is the blood here provides nourishment for their baby. On the other hand, the male Anopheles mosquito is not the agent of the transfer of the infection because again, um, that one is not feeding on the blood of the patients, but rather on the fruit juices and vegetables. Speaking about your mosquito uh, vector here, so we have here the most common genus of the mosquitoes. We have here the Culex versus your Anopheles. So they're differentiated from one another by, okay, number one, we have the bite time. So Anopheles mosquito drink a uh, bite here uh, during the night time compared with the daytime, the Culex. Another one, we have here their wings. So, spotted ang ating ang wings ng ating uh, Anopheles mosquito is my spots, whereas the Culex do not have the spots. Then, if you try to compare their body as you try to rest against the wall here, if that one is a Culex, it form a parallel orientation with its body against the wall. Whereas naman, pag nag -rest, ang ating uh, female, ang ating Anopheles mosquito, on the wall, against the wall, it formed here, their body, its body form a 90 degree angle. Okay, now we have here a different mode of the in transmission of the infection or the mode of infection. The first one, we have here the bite of the female Anopheles mosquito where it tried to inject here the infective stage, the human, which is the sporozoids. The second one, you get infected here by transplacental transfer. The mother is infected during the pregnancy. Since they are sharing their blood with the baby, then eventually the infection could also be transmitted. The third one, we have the sharing of contaminated needles, especially among drug IV drug users or even mga drug addicts. The fourth one, we have here the blood transfusion. The blood transfusion, we consider this one as uh, the induced type of the transmission because wala siyang hepatic phase. Okay, now we have here the epidemiology of the malaria. So, malaria is very prevalent worldwide. So, it could be prevalent in Asia, America, and even in Africa. So, in the Philippines, malarial infection is prevalent in Mindoro and even in Palawan. Okay, then we have here the different species of the plasmodium here which try to infect the humans. So, we have here the Vivax which is the most prevalent worldwide, the Plasmodium falciparum, which is most prevalent in the Philippines. And we have here the Plasmodium malariae, very common in Africa, and your ovale is the least common of the four species. Okay, then we have here the scientific classification of your Plasmodium. So, again, still belong to your Kingdom Animalia, Sub Kingdom Prozoa, Phylum Apicomplexa, uh, class Sporozoa, we also here your subclass of oxygen, and we have here the genus Plasmodium. Okay, then we have also here the Plasmodium which try to infect okay, the animals. So we have here your Plasmodium no lessi, which has 24 hour erythrocytic schizogony life cycle. We have here the Plasmodium. Cynomology, which resemble here the morphology of your vivax, but most likely try to infect the monkey, and that one would have your asymptomatic infection in human. Then Plasmodium brasilianum, this is the parasite of the monkeys. 
Okay, now we divide here the life cycle of the parasite into your sexual uh, reproduction. The sexual stage occur okay, here in the Anopheles mosquito. You call that one as your sporogony. Then we have here the sexual stage occur okay, in the human host. You call that one as your schizogony. So we start here our life cycle here with your pre-erythrocytic schizogony. So for example, pre-erythrocytic means to say before it entered the RBC. So we have here the female Anopheles mosquito in his proboscis, the saliva of that. So it contains here the sporozoids. So you get infected here by the sporozoids. So this is the infective stage of the human. As you try to introduce the sporozoids, sporozoid enters the liver cells or your hepatocytes. Then inside the hepatocyte, this will come here, it try to develop to become schizons. And later on, it will develop to become your merozoids. And after that one, as you try to mature, the liver cells here die and the merozoid ruptures and releases out of your liver cells. Okay, we have here some notes here. So these are the species of your plasmodium having a hepatocyte stage or able to invade the liver. We have here the plasmodium um, vivax ovale. Vivax ovale, and we have here the malaria. Uh, Plasmodium falciparum do not have a liver stage. And sometimes, uh, your schizons, which are found here in the liver cells, could become dormant, it become inactive, it become latent um, stage here. And pag sinabing uh, dormant, inactive, so the patient do not have your signs and symptoms. But then the patient would still have the tendency to reactivate that one, so like if the host immune system of the patient here become our uh, immunocompromised, then therefore it try to resolve the reinfection, and this is possible here for the relap relapse or recur. And you call it once the hypnozoids. Hypnozoids, possible for the relapse, it's possible here for the recur, it's only for those having the liver stage. In the case of your plasmodium falciparum, they don't have the liver stage, and therefore don't have here the recur or the relapse. Okay, as the liver as the liver cell here wraps through, it's try to release your merozoids. Then the merozoids here enter the red cells. But once inside the red cell here, it become your erythrocytic schizogony. Within the red cells here, the merozoids try to develop to become trophozoids, or you call it as your ring stage. Okay, we have here the young growing and eventually developing to become mature in trophozoids. Okay, so we have that uh, again. The the parasite here try to feed, try to enter the red cell here because it try to feed on the hemoglobin, but they do not fully utilize the hemoglobin. Okay, once they are on the inside the red cells here, the patient try to experience paroxysm, primarily made up of the a triads of triad of symptoms, which includes here your fever, the chills, and sweating. So basically, the best time here to collect the blood is during this stage. Because again, um, okay, they are found here on the peripheral blood circulation. Okay, so based on the rupture of the red cells, we classify your plasmodium here as either synchronous. For example, synchronous, the red cell here try to rupture at the same time. That occurring in your vivax malaria and your ovale. But in the case of your plasmodium falciparum, it would have a synchronous rupture of the red blood cells or the red cells do not rupture at the same time. Or the patient might have also here the absence of chills and meron siyang fever pero wala siyang minsan, wala siyang minsan chills. Then after that one, your trophozoite will try to develop here to become your gametocytes. Okay, that become your gametogony. So we have here two gametes here or sex cells here. So we have your micro and we have also the macro gametes. The micro gametes is your female na... Okay, the macro gametes, the macro gametes is your female na gametocytes. So this is described here as a compact chromatin, whereas the micro gametes is your male gametocytes that would have here the scattered na chromatin. Okay, once you have already here your gametocytes, we have the micro and the macro gametes. So here comes again here the next, the, um, another vector, an office mosquito here try to takes this blood meal, the female Anopheles mosquito, takes this blood meal, try to ingest, try to bite the infected patient, try to ingest the blood of the patients, and try to take here the micro and the macro gametes.
So once you have here the micro and the macro gametes inside the body of your anophilus vector, that will go here in, the, in its gastrointestinal tract where it's trying to undergo fertilization, where it tried to form here the zygote. Then after that one, the zygote here developed to become ookinate. Now the ookinate here tried to break down the gastrointestinal tract that would eventually try to go here in its uh, okay, uh, intestinal tract and eventually developing here to become your oocyst. And the oocyst here try to give rise to your sporozoids. One oocyst could eventually give rise here to as many as 100 to 1,000 sporozoids. The sporozoids migrate up to the salivary gland of your um, female novice mosquito. And then if you try to bite another patient, so it tried to transmit infection by its saliva containing the sporozoids. Okay, we have here the table for the... Nakikita niyo ba? We have here the table for the different characteristics of your four species of your plasmodium. So, I will just send na lang sa inyo ang table na to. So, anyway, lahat ng description ay dito naman. Like, we have here your plasmodium vivax, fasciparum, malaria, and we have also here the ovale. So, again, your vivax here would have Okay, the paroxysm here occur every 48 hours. The falciparum occurring here every 36 to 48 hours. For malaria, that's 72 hours. For the valley, that will be 48 hours. So, we call here your vivax as your benign tertian, falciparum as malignant tertian, malaria as quartan, and we have also benign tertian for that. So, we have your, okay, for the red cells infection, infected red cells here for the vivax, it would have your large and large and pale. It would have a normal red cell morphology for the falciparum and malaria. And we have also here for the ovale, would have here in large and oval. For the stapling, so vivax would have here the shafters that for the uh, falciparum, we have that uh, Morris that or Christopher Stevens that. For the malaria, that's your Siemens that. And for the ovale, that's your James that. Another one, we have here your, okay, we have the early trophocyte stage. The early trophocyte stage for the vivax is capable of occupying here approximately the ring form, the trophocyte we're talking about, the ring form, uh, makita inside the red cells natin. Ang ring form, the trophocyte ay makikita sa red cell natin. So we describe the ring stage of your vivax here as, as capable only of single ring infections. So single ring, isang ring lang. Pag falciparum is capable of multiple ring infection, for the malaria, that's also capable of uh, single ring infection, and for your ovale is also capable of only a single ring infection. Okay, then we have your continued um, okay, the, the table here. So, we describe here the ring form of your vivax as delicate for the falciparum is very delicate compact ring in your malaria and then string in the case of your ovale. Then we have here your chromatin dots. Usually for the uh, vivax is one, that one is average of two. Falsifying the chromatin dots is surely average of two. For malaria, that's one mass. And for the ovale, we have here dense, well-defined. For the late trophocyte, again, the vivax are capable of your but it was the capable the we describe the late trophosa here as triangular. It's I mean it's thick, irregular, amoeboid. In the case of your falciparum, it's uh, comma shape, it's exclamatory mark. But the late trophosa for the falciparum is rarely found in your peripheral blood. For the malaria, so it would have here one mass or one band. Ko ito red cell natin para may ganyan siya throughout the diameter of the ring. Uh, throughout the diameter of the red cells as one mass, so that's our case of your malaria. Then for the valley, that one would have a compact shape. Uh, smerozoids for the vivax, average of 16, it describes as morola, marbelli, mar, 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 mulberry formation. Okay, for the falciparum, average of 24, that would be, again, that one is a rare peripheral blood. And we have also here for the malaria, we would have here the merocytes average of 10. And that one would have here the daisy head. Uh, we have the rosa formation, margarite, and fruit pie characteristics. And in case of your 
a validated one without an average of um, eight na merosoids. For the microgametes, so we have year-round oval for the vivax. For the vasivarum, ito yung ating okay, kidney shape, vein shape. Okay, in the case of your uh, malai, that would have the same characteristics as your vivax, only that appears to be much smaller. And for the ovale, ovale on the other hand, it's uh, microgametes, so they have the same characteristics as your um, vivax, only that one is much smaller. For the macrogametes, your vivax would have triangular, and that one would have your eccentric and compact chromatin mass. For the falciparum, we'd have here the sausage shape. So, so parang like sausage shape, that's your falciparum. Pero pag uh, ring form na band shape, again, that's your malari. In the case of your malari, it's uh, microgametes would be around compact chromatin. Ovale with also the same characteristics with your vivax. Only that one is have a smaller diameter compared or smaller size compared to your vivax. Incubation period for the Vivax, that's uh, 6 to 8 days. For the Falsivarum, that's 5 to 7 days. And for your Malari, that's uh, 13 to 16 days. And for your Ovali, that's uh, 9 days.